Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Hello, wildlings. Stop me if you've heard this one. I was just following orders. You'll often hear this little platitude used when discussing the worst things that people do to each other when engaged in the waging of war. But sadly, there are those folks who were honestly just doing their jobs, following orders, and dealing with things that they couldn't have been expected to understand. As in tonight's secretive story of the suck, my grandfather knew what happened in the Dyatlov Pass Incident Part 2 by Drunken Swordsman. My grandfather committed suicide in 2019. I translated his diary and found out what he was hiding from all of us since way back in 1958. This is his story. If you're confused, you should probably start at the beginning. The entry from December 21st is followed by several empty pages. This is what follows. Unknown date. 1958. If you find this, please get off the mountain. You may not make it, but if you do, take this diary and bring it to Army Command, to the KGB, to anyone who will listen. They need to know what happened here. My heart sank when I heard the order consigning me to level 5. It took a second to truly hit me, the reality slowly setting in my mind. It was Sergei. It had to be him. He remembered my inquiry into Yuri's fate and had made sure, either from cruelty or from some twisted sense of, I don't know, justice, that I would share my friend's fate, whatever that was. But there was nothing I could do about it now. I left for level 5 immediately. Uh, the officer on guard duty at the tunnel from level 4 looked at my printed orders and smiled sadly. Wait in the side room, son. I have to double check all level 5 postings with command. It'll be just a second. He waved vaguely to a small unlit side room before walking over to a telephone set in the wall and dialing a number. I walked over into the side chamber resignedly. The room was dark, only lit by a thin sliver of light coming from the corridor outside and filled with dank air. There was another person waiting inside, standing silently in the corner. As I approached, I could slowly make out more features. The man seemed familiar, even in the dark. It looked like... Yuri? Is that you? I asked incredulously. What are you doing here? Where have you been? My... Mikhail? Yuri asked. I stared at my friend in shock. He had changed horribly in the few short days that we'd been parted, where before he was a healthy, well-built man with an undying smile on his face. He was now sallow and frowning. His eyes were dead and cold. Yes, Yuri, it's me. Are you all right? Have you been discharged from level five? You've been... I didn't get to get another word out. Yuri darted forward, slamming into me one forearm, pinning my neck to the wall. He thrust his face right in front of mine. Where are you going, Mikhail? He hissed in a sharp whisper. Have you been posted to level five? Y yes. Sergei sent me here as punishment for asking about you. Then Yuri swore under his breath. Fuck. Listen to me, Mikhail. Don't listen to the screaming. Whatever you do, don't listen to it. If you can't take it anymore, do whatever you have to. Just get out of there. Fake an illness, insult the officer, get taken to the prison wing. Whatever you need, just get out of there. There was a cough from the door. The officer stood there, uncertain as to what was happening. You have been cleared for level five, Private Sidorov, he began tentatively. Yuri backed away from me. Remember, Mikhail. Remember what I told you. Then he swept out of the room and out of sight. Is everything all right, Private? The officer asked. Is something the matter? No, sir. 
I answered finally, Yuri's cryptic warning still swirling through my head. I was just talking with my friend. I walked past him to the thick iron door separating me from level 5. It slid open, slowly, revealing the room that I was to guard until I was relieved. And the screaming hit me. I couldn't pay attention to anything but that sound. It was all-encompassing, a cacophony of agony. The sound of several men tortured beyond the limits of flesh and bone. I was no stranger to the sounds of pain after my time in the army, but none of it could compare to this. My eyes snapped to the source of the sound involuntarily. It was coming from the back of the massive room that I had entered. The wall was solid rock carved from the mountain itself. A small opening yawned dark at its base, seemingly a cave entrance that was blocked off after several meters by a pile of rubble and stone. A rockfall had evidently sealed the cave shut. My head swam and I leaned on a wall for support. I couldn't think, I couldn't focus on anything but that echoing sound of men in horrible, never-ending pain. I was drowning in a dark pool inside my mind with nothing to grab onto. Don't listen to the screaming. Yuri's words were pulling me back into reality. So I steeled myself. The screaming was still there, gnawing at my sanity, but I set myself against it. I would not fall to it. A man in a lab coat walked past me, and I stepped into his path. He was a thin man with a bald head and the stubble of several days on his chin. Comrade, what is that thing? I asked him, pointing to the cave entrance. Where does it lead? He looked at me in confusion. Do you not know? Didn't anyone tell you? This is my first time on level 5. I don't know anything about this place. Please, I need to know. The researcher looked around as if checking no one was watching us. Then he stepped in close to me. There used to be a huge cave system beneath this mountain, he said, his voice low. The local tribe would report strange noises coming out of it, and every now and then people would disappear while on the mountain. So we sent out a small unit of five to check the tunnels. What happened to them? Only one of them ever made it out. They found him three days later, wandering the wastes outside. He was beyond help, muttering to himself about the dark, about blood and things underneath his skin. When another unit went in to find his comrades, they got all the way down there and found the cave-in. It seems that the man blew a grenade while escaping and caused a rockfall that sealed the end of the caverns off. And the men inside? The men inside have been screaming ever since this place was found. Not a second of silence in five years. The man stepped away from me and then hurried off, obviously not wishing to continue talking. I swallowed nervously, my mouth suddenly dry and my throat tight. So glad you could join us today, Private, came a voice from next to me. I turned and came face to face with Commander Sergei Yohantov. The man was smiling slightly, but that unceasing anger still simmered in his eyes. Sir, yes sir, I saluted, clenching my jaw in frustration. Awaiting orders, sir. Sergei smiled. There's not much to do for soldiers here, Private except wait and remain vigilant. You will stand guard at that post until you are relieved. He pointed at a small niche set in one of the walls of the room, barely large enough for a man to stand in. Sir, yes sir, I answered, gritting my teeth. I walked over to my post and stood to attention in it. The screaming was still hammering at my ears, tearing at my mind. There were no words to it and no halt, not even for those screaming to take a breath. There was no way it could have been so loud through the rock cutting us off from the men, if it even was men. But somehow it was, drowning out everything else. 
I looked around the room and tried to preoccupy myself with something else. It was a massive hallway, dozens of meters long and almost as many deep. There were many niches similar to mine in the walls, some occupied by dead-eyed soldiers, many others empty. The center of the room was filled with desks and elaborate equipment manned by researchers and scientists. I saw that almost all of them were wearing heavy hearing protection, drowning out the all-encompassing cacophony. They were working with complicated-looking electronic gear, the intent of which I couldn't even begin to fathom. Right in front of the sealed cave entrance was a massive, wheeled cannon. It was loaded and ready to fire, aiming straight at the pile of rubble separating us from whatever was inside there. Manning it were five soldiers, in uniforms that I did not recognize, all with heavy ear protection. It appeared that we were expendable, but they were not. As my interest in the surroundings waned, the screaming returned, stronger than before. I couldn't think of anything but it, and the longer I listened, the more I became certain that there was something more than human beneath it, an undertone that no man's throat could ever utter. Whatever was in there, it wasn't altogether human. Time began to lose all meaning for me. How long had I been standing there? Minutes? Hours? Days? I don't know. There was nothing to hold on to, nothing to compare the passage of time to, only the crying of the trapped men. I would occasionally regain consciousness, confused as to what was happening and where I was. Only the walls of my post kept me upright as I leaned heavily on them. When I closed my eyes, I could still see that terrible cave and the barrier of rock between me and whatever was in there. I don't know how long I was on guard before Yuri's words pierced the veil of my thoughts. If you can't take it anymore, do whatever you have to, just get out of there. I wished to serve my country. I would have gladly laid down my life for it, but this this was something I could not do. I had to get out of this room before I lost my mind. Slowly, almost theatrically, I keeled over and landed face down on the floor. I shut my eyes and went limp. Medic! Someone yelled, barely audible over the screams. The thud, thud of boots hammered on the floor as several men ran over to me and pushed me onto my back. I kept my eyes shut, feigning unconsciousness. We need to get him to medical, came a voice that I didn't recognize from somewhere above me. He may go into shock, not everyone can handle this for too long. I felt arms grab me, pull me up, and begin dragging me somewhere. I hoped that it was towards the exit from level 5. And then the movement stopped, suddenly. No. The voice was Sergei Yahontov's, and it came from in front, between me and the exit. Shit. Sir, this man is unconscious. This place might have been too much for him. We need to get him to a... No, comrade. This man is here as a disciplinary measure, and here he will stay till he awakens. Take him to the prison room and put him in a cell. He will be safe there till he awakens. Send for a medic to check on him if you wish. But sir, he... That is an order, Private. Understood, sir. I was being dragged again, but in a different direction. Panic rose within me. Not only would I remain on level 5, but I would be trapped in a prison cell at the mercy of Commander Yehontov and his twisted sense of justice. But if I awoke, he might guess that I was only acting. If service on level 5 was his punishment for asking about Yuri, I did not want to know what his price would be for this. I was laid down on a cold stone slab. An iron door slammed somewhere nearby. Then there was silence, broken only by the wailing of level 5. Time began to slip past me again. Minutes blended into hours. There was only the sound from outside. And suddenly... I was pulled back to reality. 
It took me a second to realize what had broken me out of my horrifying trance. It was silence. Absolute silence. The screaming had stopped. There was a second of nothingness as it seemed the world was drawing its breath. Then klaxons and sirens wailed outside the door of my cell. The thump of boots echoed through the halls as soldiers took up positions. I leapt up, running over to the solid metal door of my room and beating on it with my fists. Let me out! Let me out, damn you! There was no answer at all. Then someone screamed in level 5, that same inhuman screech that had before come from within the cave, except now it was outside. It was closer, more immediate. It was in that room. There was a gunshot, then another, then a whole salvo, and the ground shook as the massive cannon that I had seen discharged one single time. The screaming grew in volume as more men joined in, but never more than a handful at once. One cry would die down in a wet gurgle, only for another to take its place. I backed away from the door and fell to the ground, hands clenched on my ears. Something heavy hit the door and a red puddle began spreading from beneath it. There was a clash of steel from outside, the agonized wail of heavy doors being ripped off their axis, and the screaming grew distant, spreading upward through the facility, I thought. And silence fell on level five. I have been here since then. I cannot open the cell door from the inside. As far as I can tell, Days have passed. Thirst and hunger torment me, but I have to hold on in case I'm ever rescued. I have to warn someone. I have to warn them about what happened on level five. Okay, so maybe I lied a little bit. Yeah, Gramps was trying to get out of following orders. But can you blame him? when even the higher-ups had no idea the scale of shit that they were in. Stay scary, wildlings. Always watch out for those killer assignments and make the most of your nights. <laughs>